Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 411 Ground and Pound Radio Show, your weekly look into the wide, wacky, wonderful world of mixed martial arts. I'm your host, Robert Winfrey, and here's your warning. I'm flying solo tonight, which is fine. Uh, Jeff's out celebrating with his family. Pat, I assume, is doing similarly or had some kind of scheduling conflict. I don't know. But it's Father's Day, 2018, and... I'm not begrudging anyone spending time with their families, so I'm just warning everybody out there, it's just me for however long this takes. And it shouldn't take long. Uh, We just have a very... uh, It's a card. We have a card to preview. Um, That's about as far as I can get with this. But uh, I will be going over UFC Fight Night 132. Yeah, 132. So I will be previewing that, and, oh yes, Peter Yan's debuting. Sorry, uh, I'll get to that. Just hadn't actually looked at the card in a while. Uh, so we will have a preview of that, and then any major news from the last week that I want to maybe kick around. I don't think there was anything too major, but I'll have a look at some of my notes. And we'll go from there. So let's kick things off here. Uh, again, it's just me. So, UFC Fight Night 132. The UFC is returning to Singapore. Your guess is as good as mine as to why. But they are. Uh, this will be... Oh, this is like some stupid hour early in the morning for me, isn't it? Watch it not actually be stupid, but like 6, when normal people are up anyway, and I'm just hating life. I'm of the opinion that mornings suck, and they don't end until noon. So, if I can sleep through them, I will. But uh, your main event is, God bless Donald Cerrone, you know that, I mean, this is a guy who, one of the last guys who, when they say anyone, anywhere, anytime, actually means it. I mean, this guy fought, he beat Yancey in Austin, Texas, for his last fight, before that, he was in... I mean, this guy's been everywhere. Yeah, he was in Poland to fight Darren Till. That was Darren Till's big breakthrough performance. I mean, now he's in, you know, freaking Singapore fighting Leon Edwards. I mean, seriously, we, we do not appreciate, I don't think we appreciate enough this guy's you know, mantra about, you know, you know, sure, I'll go to this foreign country and fight this tough up-and-comer that no one else really wants to fight. Yeah, sure, because I'm Donald Cerrone, and I can do it. Uh, but, you know, man, good for him, you know, because it's really the only... Again, there's a few other fights that if you really want to look for good stuff to look forward to, you can maybe make an argument for, but... Anyway, he, and he's fighting Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards, man, seriously underappreciated guy. Um, his only losses in the UFC, he lost a split decision to Claudio Silva, Claudio Silva, excuse me, back in 14. Then he lost a decision to Kamaru Usman, and that's it. Uh, he has wins over a lot of nobodies and a few really good guys, actually. I mean, he's on a, what, five-fight winning streak? Six? One, two, three... Yeah, five. Uh, including wins over Albert Tumanov, Vicente Luque. I mean, those those aren't easy outs. And again, his only UFC losses have been to really tough guys. I mean, Claudia Silva just... had a pretty big comeback after a significant layoff, and Kamar Usman is kind of a beast. Uh, this is a really good fight. Um, as for how I think it'll go, it's always tough when you step up to fight Donald Cerrone because he's a really good acid test for you. If you can't hang with Donald Cerrone, you you're gonna hit. You know, that lets you know where your ceiling is. And if you beat Donald Cerrone, I mean, again, his recent three fight losing streak notwithstanding. Because, I mean, he wasn't losing to nobodies for that either. He lost to, I mean, Till Lawler and Masvidal, and those are all really good guys. Jeez, where do I lean here? 
Edwards is the more natural welterweight, which is a big thing. Cerrone's a little undersized for the weight class, but makes it work. I mean, that's not... He's not hugely undersized for the division. He's just slightly on the smaller side. And even that's mostly frame. I mean, in terms of height and reach, he's kind of average. But he just doesn't have the frame that a lot that some of the other you know, bigger welterweights do. Edwards has really... Cerrone struggles against guys who really know how to punch. And those really, you know, accurate, fast-hand, you know, boxer-style guys who can get in close and kind of press the action on him. And Leon Edwards has some really sharp, fast hands. I mean, if Cerrone keeps this at kicking distance, he's he's doing pretty good. If this gets to the mat, I kind of favor him, especially if he's on top. Which is not to say that Leon Edwards is a terrible grappler, but Cerrone's the more credentialed and proven grappler to this point in time. I'm going to lean towards Edwards here. Um, not heavily, but I'm going to lean towards Edwards. But uh, if if that fight falls through, man, uh, that whole event ought to just be like, nope, we're done. But your co-main event, UG, light heavyweights, Ovin St. Prue. Was coming off of a <laughs> a technical submission when he was punched in the face and then standing guillotined by Alir Latifi. <laughs> Alir Latifi. I mean, he had a pretty good streak going before that. He was three in a row. Uh, all of them were finishes. Two of them were Von Flew chokes. Then he knocked out Corey Anderson. And he's fighting Tyson Pedro. Um, Pedro, this is a pretty big step up for Pedro. Pedro, um, 3-1 and one in the UFC. Uh, let's see, he, yeah, he beat Khalil Roundtree and Paul Craig. He lost to Alir Latifi, then he beat Saperbek Safarov. This is a pretty, this is not a, uh, a weak step up for him. Safarov is just kind of a dude. While light heavyweight is a wasteland that is burning, just a heap of burning garbage, Ovin St. Prue is not someone that you can just kind of ignore. He's awkward. He is so physically awkward. It's the weirdest thing. But he has power. He has decent counter-wrestling. And if you're stupid enough to hold a front, to hold his head when he takes you down, he can slide around to the Von Flew choke. And given the number of stupid people at this weight class, he's got a few of those on his belt, under his belt. Pedro's a guy on the big side for the division. He's he's just so raw. You know, he's got good power, but he's not the most technically sound. He's he's well-rounded, but he's not blowing you away with his well-roundedness, you know? This feels like too much too soon for Pedro, in a very real way. I mean, I hope he wins, because light heavyweight desperately needs a shake-up, but... I don't know. Again, this is just... For all of Ovin St. Prue's numerous faults, he's a proven fighter. Proven, you know, we've very clearly seen his ceiling as well. But I have not seen enough from Tyson Pedro to consistently pick him to win in this circumstance. I'll go with St. Prue, and just for laughs, let's say he gets another Von Flew choke, because why not? Um, jeez. Yeah, this card goes way downhill after this, guys. Because at women's flyweight, we have Jessica Rose Clark taking on Jessica I. Jessica I is terrible. She just broke a four-fight losing streak with a split decision that she shouldn't have gotten because she out... she Like, she didn't even really... God, how do I say this? She won this based on takedowns, but the takedowns meant dick. Like, it was so stupid. <laughs> Um, oh, and then afterwards, she's like, oh, takedowns win fights. No one wants, you know, like, I don't, you know, no one wants to see exciting fights. I have to win. Like, the dumbest, dumbest, and she's not good. I mean, she lost to Betch Kohea. Like, really? <laughs> um, just, yeah. And Jessica Rose Clark is 2-0 in the UFC. I really hope she's... 
Man, she's missed weight. That's a problem. A lot, jeez. Well, not a lot. Only once in the UFC, but twice overall. <laughs> she had a fight overturned due to her missing weight. Uh, come on. If everyone agreed to continue after someone misses weight, what are we doing, people? You know, I was in Japan, so, eh. I mean, again, just because Jessica I is kind of terrible, I'm going to pick Jessica Rose Clark, but uh, I-, I wouldn't hold my breath on anything interesting or really all that exciting com- coming out of that fight. And kicking off the main card, this whole thing takes place on Fight Pass. Uh, we have Lee Jingliang taking on, taking on Daichi Abe. Uh, this, flight, this one's going to fly under the radar a little bit. I mean, the whole card is. But Lee Jing Leong, coming off of that uh, that weird fight with Jake Matthews where he eye-gouged him just horribly. I mean, those were those were some horrible eye-gouges. I mean, that was... I, mean, I remember after it happened, we compared him a little bit to uh, Gordo, who, like, blinded someone with eye-gouges. Or uh, if you wanted to go back to... There was a pride fight, infamously, between... Gilbert Ivel and Don Fry, where Ivel just gouged the crap out of Don Fry. Uh, horrible. Horrible. This was a horrible eye gouge. But prior to that, he was on a four-fight winning streak. He finished three of those. I mean, he's... He's not anyone... You know, he's Again, the eye gouging, kind of putting that aside, he's a good fighter. And Abe, another guy who kind of flies under the radar a little bit. Uh, he he lost his last fight. Prior to that, he defeated hyun Gyu Lim. Who did he lose to? Luke Jamo? Yeah, Luke Jamo. Hmm. This is kind of a gimme for Lee. For the old leech. Let's see if he can keep things clean this time around, but again, this is... Not a full gimme, but it's kind of a let's get you back on track type of matchmaking. I mean, Abe might still clip him and knock him out because Abe's got some non-trivial power in his hands, but uh, I, I, I feel more confident picking Jing Leong here. Um, on Fight Pass. Oh, sorry, the whole thing's on Fight Pass. As for the prelims. Um, Peter Yan is debuting, and I'm really, I'm really, exci- I'm really excited about this. I don't know how many of you may have seen some of his fights. Uh, his Both of his fights with uh, Magomed, Magomedov from uh, ACB. I think they're up on... Uh, I think they're just up on YouTube. ACB's YouTube channel is pretty good, actually. Uh, but that's his only loss was their first fight, which is a split decision that, quite frankly, I thought he won. Uh, he... Won another fight in between then and there. He won the rematch. He's defended the ACB bantamweight title. Um, Jan is... I'm kind of excited about this. Again, like, just to see him in the UFC. And he's fighting Teruto Ishihara. This is kind of set up for Jan to look good. Um, Or prove that he is not at all prepared to deal with the takedowns of... Ishihara and get laid and prayed on for however long it takes. Um, Ishihara is only one in three in his last four, and that one win was over Rolando D. I mean, he lost to Artem Lobov, and I'm on record saying that Artem Lobov sucks. He's coming off of that loss to Jose Alberto Quinones. It was rough, man. I like Yon here. Again, if his takedown defense is on point, I like Yon a lot. If it's not, well, I hope it is. But, yeah, I, I, I like Yon there. Again, He's I've enjoyed his ACB stuff, so. Then we have Felipe Arantes is back. Good for him, man. He's on a two-fight losing streak. I mean, he lost that fight up at featherweight to Josh Emmett in his last fight. He lost a split decision to Eric Perez before that that he could easily have won. That was... I think I scored it for Perez, but that was a very competitive fight. And he is taking on Song Yadong. Uh, insert jokes. I'm not going to make them because I don't care. Um, Yadong... 
choked out. He won his UFC debut. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. It was a choke over Kondare. I forget how to pronounce that guy's last name. Yeah, there there are time in China when Gaslam knocked out Bisbing. <sighs> he had a pretty. I want to say he had a crazy comeback in that fight type thing. He thought it was just a really nice choke. I'd have to rewatch that to feel good about calling that overall. He might have been one of the guys that actually came out of that going, no, this is someone we can actually kind of look forward to. Where's it the other guy? I, don't, I genuinely don't remember. Um, Iran just is significantly more proven. Uh, he last fought, what, October of last year? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with Arantius, and I kind of hope I'm wrong about that one. Um, at featherweight, Rolando D., this poor guy, um, coming off of his first UFC win after missing weight, had to bring in somebody just for him to lo- to win. Uh, I mean, this guy lost to Alex Caceres. That was a doctor stoppage. He lost to Teruto Ishihara. This is not a UFC caliber fighter. And he is fighting Shane Young. Is he debuting? No, he got... Oh, no, Alexander Volkanovsky smashed him. Um, That was... November of last year? I believe that's what that was. Uh, and Volkanovsky's kind of a beast. Not sure how much I should hold that against him, then. I'll go with Young, because, I mean, like, I can't pick Rolando D. I just can't. Um, At welterweight, Song Kanan is fighting Hector Aldana. It might have been Song Kanan I was actually kind of looking... I came away feeling better about after his UFC debut. Yeah, because he beat Bobby... He smashed Bobby Nash. Jeez. That was to break a two-fight losing streak. And Aldana is only 4-0. and oh. He's coming off of... Dude, he hasn't fought in like three years. Man, yeah, he was... He, was, he competed on Tough Latin America Season 2, and the last time he fought was the exhibition bout on the show when he got submitted. In... What, April of 15? Jeez, that's a long layoff. Yeah, I got I got Song here. I got I got Song Kanan for that one, man. That's a long layoff, for, especially for a guy without that much experience to begin with. Um, Shinzo Anzai, who is 2-1 in the UFC. Beat Luke Jamo. Had uh, there was that hand injury in the Zapata fight. I kind of remember that one actually. What ended up being a weird thing. He's fighting Jake Matthews. This is uh, they they keep trying to get Jake Matthews to really kind of hit that next level, man. And he's he's come close a couple of times, but he seems to stumble at the wrong time. Like the loss to he debuted in the UFC undefeated, wins his first two fights, then gets submitted by James Vick, comes back, wins his next two, including a big one over Johnny Case, then gets smashed by Kevin Lee. And you know, I mean Kevin Lee's a you know, really good fighter. Loses to Andrew Holbrook, edges out Boyan Velichkovich, beats Lee Jing Leong, so he's two and zero since returning to welterweight. Actually, he's never lost at welterweight. Period. Because his lightweight debut was when he debuted in the UFC. Uh, I this is a pretty safe Jake Matthews pick here, guys. I mean, he's a big guy, um, good all around, better at distance with either his kicks or if he's on top in the grappling exchanges. But yeah, I I like Matthews here. Um, we have a women's straw weight bout between Yan Shaonan. I want to say has been in the has fought in the UFC before. Yeah, she beat Kylan Curran, which is not hard to do. If history is any indicator. 
Um, she's fighting Viviane Pereja. Pereja just had her first professional setback, if memory serves. Yeah, she got kind of smoked by Tatiana Suarez. Not sure about this one. I mean, logic says Pieja, but I'm kind of leaning towards Shown On. Just, I don't know why. Because it amuses me to do so, I guess. I don't know. Um, at flyweight, Matt Schnell. Gah. This poor guy. There aren't too many guys who are technically sound like Schnell is, but just for whatever reason cannot get anything going. Um, he got knocked out in his first two UFC fights. Uh, beat Marco Beltron, but uh, he's fighting uh, Naoki Inoue. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Who had that successful debut against Carl John de Thomas. Uh, Inoue's a Solid grappler. I'll go with Chanel, but not sold on that. And kicking everything off, we have Janelle Lausa fighting Ulka Sasaki. Lausa is 1-2 and two in the UFC. He's on a two-fight losing streak with losses to Magomed Bibluadov and Eric Shelton. His only win is over Yao Jiquei. And I actually kind of like... Sasaki. I mean, he's coming off of that submission loss to Juicy Formiga. And he's 2-2 two and two at flyweight with wins over Willie Gates and Justin Scoggins. He's kind of limited in the sense that he really has to be involved in grappling, especially scrambling exchanges to win. And he really does have to be on your back. But, I mean, I Laos is just... Uh, he's just kind of there. I'll go with Sasaki there, but Lausa might surprise me or a few other people. And uh, that's it. Again, not a terribly long card. Assuming that I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything here. In case there's some, you know, announced fight that hasn't been updated somewhere along the line. Nah, that looks like it's it. All right. So that will be that. Uh, it should be... Uh, Again, like, it's not good on paper. It's an it's a it's an overseas fight pass exclusive card. They're not going to be that good on paper. They just never are. But there's a few fights here that might surprise a few people. Again, the main event is it's a Donald Cerrone fight. I mean, come on, how many bad fights has that guy had throughout his entire career? Like five, maybe. <laughs> So, I will have coverage of that again early morning, Saturday in the MMA Zone of 411 Mania, so if you happen to be awake, stop by and say hello. I appreciate it. Um, jeez. That took no time at all. Alright, as for news, let me pull up my notes here. Let's see if I have anything worth talking about. It was a relatively quiet week from what I can remember. I mean, there was a lot more you know, stuff kind of happening in the in the MMA bubble that wasn't necessarily news. Uh, I mean, Dana White mentioned he really wants to make John Jones and Brock Lesnar. There's rumors that people, you know... I'm, the Brock rumors have started again. Fine. It's a waste of time. Um, I mean, Brock and John, like, sure, make the fight. John will smash Brock and we'll all move on. I mean, come on, that's not even competitive. That's not even a competitive fight. Uh, oh, Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series kicked off this last week. Uh, Greg Hardy signed what I believe they're calling a developmental deal. Not sure how I feel about that, but he scored a impressive knockout, such as it was. Um, but the contender series is pretty good. I've I've got to see about. I can't do it live because my Tuesdays are weird. Like it's it's just not a reliable night for me to cover events live. But I could do a some kind of a write-up after the fact, which I 
should probably be doing at this point. I will look into that for next week. But uh, the Contender Series, it had a couple of good performances. Had a guy with score a really nice hook kick knockout. Uh, there were a couple of decent heavyweight prospects that showed up. Uh, let's see. Any other major news? I mean, there's a lot of chat. There's a lot of chirping about uh, you know CM Punk's performance because people want clicks. Look, it was it was horrible. I've made my position clear on that fight. I really don't think there was all that much else. Uh, there's probably something relatively big that I'm just not remembering or didn't write it down just uh, so I I hate I hate when I can't remember off the top of my head if things if anything major happened let's see uh, the UFC did confirm okay uh, there's a couple of fights I suppose we can talk about briefly. They confirmed Justin Gaethje and Ally Aquinta for U. They fleshed out UFC Fight Night 135. Uh, let me have a look at this. Two, thirty-three, four. So this would be their Nebraska card. Yeah, Gaethje and Iaquinta is the main event. Not sure who can complain about that fight. Um, it's. Ally Aquinta doesn't have much outside of a right hand, but Gaethje will walk into your right hand, so... <sighs> Hard to say. What else do we have for that card? Ronnie Yaya and Luke Sanders isn't bad. Eric Anders is fighting again. He's getting a get-well fight after a dubious decision loss to Leoto Machida. I mean, again, like Gaethje and Iaquint is your big seller there, and that's to just engage you fight, man. I'm not going to complain about that one at all. Uh, they confirmed John Dodson and Jimmy Rivera. We probably talked about that already, but it's a great fight for UFC 228. Man, UFC 228 is we don't have a whole lot set up for it yet, but. Actually, we don't have much of anything set up for it. Excuse me, I was I was thinking of a different event. But they've announced Yair versus uh, Magomed Sharipov and Rivera versus Dodson, which are two really good lower weight fights. I mean, they're going to need something relatively big for 228 because nobody's buying 227. And it, it pains me to say that, but your main event is TJ Dillashaw versus Cody Garbrandt, and your co-main event is Demetrius Johnson and Henry Cejudo. So we have two lower weight fight, lower weight title fights, rematches of fights that didn't necessarily do tremendous business the first time around. Oh, sorry, sorry. I mean, UFC 217 actually did good business, but that was because of GSP and Bisbing. You know, they were seen by enough... Pe- uh, that might actually have an effect. I, I, I need to make sure I consider that fully. Because those two had a... For as long as that fight lasted, it was, what, seven minutes and change, all things considered? They had a great fight. They had a great seven-minute fight. And a lot of people saw that because GSP and Bisbing drew a respectable number. I need some sort of confirmation of that buy rate, but one of the better buy rates certainly of last year. So maybe uh, that's a, it's a tough one, man. It's a real tough one to know how much of what they of them being exposed on that type of a platform is going to do for them transitioning into this into you know headlining and having to carry the bulk of the drawing potential and it doesn't help that again I, I love Mighty Mouse my favorite fighter actual favorite one of my favorites it, it rotates the top 5 or so rotate my my fandom for Demetrius Johnson is well established at this point but the man cannot draw and it's sad because he's tremendous but 
I can't ignore reality. Like people aren't people don't pay to see Demetrius Johnson fight, which is a crying shame in some respects, but is also an undeniable fact of existence at this point in time. I mean, your next fight down the card from that is Swanson and Moicano, which, if you know both guys, is a pretty good fight. But like, we're se- we're leaning real hard on those top two fights, and one of them we know is not a draw. We j- we we have proof that Demetrius Johnson and Henry Cejudo not a huge drawing affair. I don't know. Again, like so, the point being, two twenty eight is going to need to be a pretty big card. Because that one, uh, that's going to be a rough one for the buy rate. Should be a great night of fights, but. So they have fleshed out a few of those. Let's see. I think that's all the pseudo major. Again, not a big, not a big news week. Not a big, there's not a whole lot going on at the moment. So, I think that's going to, again, it's just me, guys, and there's not a whole lot to talk about, so we're going to be a shorter show this evening. Uh, If this is less time than it takes for, you know, the sound of my voice to put your child to sleep, because I assume that's what people actually use this for. That's really, who who cares what I... (laughs) I get it. I I appreciate your support, guys. My self-deprecation is long ingrained into my personality, so don't... Don't take it too seriously. It's almost a reflex at this point. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be... I think that's it, man. Is there any other... I think if there's any other major combat... I mean, they announced the... They they announced the date for the rematch between uh, Triple G and Alvarez. Boy, those... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we sure did punish Canelo. <laughs> Ugh. The whole circumstance surrounding that was, I mean, it was so... uh, It's just stupid. Like, the implementation of so much anti-doping is so... just stupid. I mean, you had the... What was it? You you had this, like, bill before Congress for the United States... for people in the United States. There was that bill. They were, like, trying to criminalize uh, doping in international competition. Really? How stupid are we? Is this really the path we're going down? This is just so stupid. And I'm not necessarily pro-doping. I prefer a clean sport. But how far down this particular rabbit hole are we going to spiral, guys? I mean, I would love to talk... I, I would like... I would love to talk more about, you know, the UFC potentially signing Greg Hardy after the Contender Series fight, but the way it was phrased and set up, because Hardy has, like, one or two fights that might have been his pro debut, now that I think about it, the UFC is not going to bring him in necessarily right away. There was a lot of talk about them signing him, but him still fighting for smaller organizations, which is not... And look, I am not... Let me put it like this. I tend to consider the evidence against Greg Hardy for his being a huge bag of fecal matter to be solid, and I tend to think it's conclusive enough for me to feel that this is a terrible human being. How the UFC... I mean, and look, let me also be very clear about this. There's a lot of fighters that are terrible people. We just don't hear about it. Or if we do, it's in the dumbest ways possible, like Mike Perry discovering that he has some vague African genetics in his ancestry, which, I mean, technically we all do, because when, because that was actually where, like, humanity started back when we had the sing, when we had the Pangean continent, the area that is now Africa is actually where life began, and then separation, yeah, you, you guys don't need an anthropologic history lesson from me, so I'm not going to go into it, but you know, Mike Perry deciding that because he has some vague African ancestry, courtesy of one of those stupid send-off-your-DNA results, he's now free to use the N-word. No, dude. You're from Fort Lauderdale. You're white. You have a bad face tattoo. Don't give people more reason to hate you. Like, come on. 
Or you have, you know, Andrea Lee's husband, like, with this friggin' swastika tattooed on his arm. Like, these are the people. Like, really. We're... I do not condone anything about Greg Hardy as a human, assuming his guilt, and given the evidence, I feel okay judging. All right? But let's not pretend that MMA is somehow devoid of this. Like, I mean, when Dana White said, you know, I'll take Conor McGregor throwing a dolly at a bus any day over some of the other, the stuff other sports deal with, A, that's true. Like, that is, that's a stupid thing, but it's so much easier to deal with than a lot of the other crap that goes on other sports, and a lot of the crap that goes on in his sport. Again, there, there's like there's just a lot of crap. So I'm so the point there being, I don't hate the UFC signing guys to essentially developmental deals where they continue fighting for smaller organizations. That's not a bad policy necessarily. I don't know how to feel about the UFC bringing in you know Greg Hardy necessarily because of. His, again, documented issues being a human piece of trash. But if we disqualified everyone from participation in MMA for being a terrible person, there would be five guys in, like, three weight classes and no one would watch. Like, it's just kind of the nature of the sport. Not just the sport, but sports, like, there's some there's some unsavory characters that are attracted to it and personality types and I mean it's a whole thing. Uh, it's so I I don't know I'd rather they didn't in a perfect world but he competes at heavyweight that division kind of sucks. So we'll we'll see where it goes and in all fairness let me be very clear about this if this bothers you don't watch don't go on Twitter and whine about it don't. Don't protest exorbitantly. Don't again. Don't go on and on and on. If this bothers you, the single best thing you can do is not watch. I mean, this gets brought up in relationship to Colby Covington because there's a bunch of people who complain about I don't care and his shtick doesn't work. If you don't care and his shtick doesn't work, you're not whining about it. There's a reason I only bring him up. When I think, again, like for a point like this, other than that, I don't talk about him because I don't care. If he's got a fight coming up, I'll preview it. If it's over, I'll review it. And, like, other than that, whatever. I mean, in all seriousness, this is my standard for this. If you want to know how you feel about someone, imagine the best thing in the world happening to them. How do you feel? Then imagine the worst thing in the world happening to them. How do you feel about it? I absolutely do not care if the best thing in the world happens to Colby Covington. Guy could win the lottery. I wouldn't care. Similarly, he could get hit by a bus. I wouldn't care. But you also will not hear me, week in and week out, clicking on articles related to him, complaining about him, talking about him, etc., etc. So again, if, if the UFC signing Greg Hardy is something that you find morally offensive and you wish to make a point about it, don't talk about it. Don't, again, make it clear that this might be a problem for you, but just don't watch. That is the single most powerful thing you can do to influence a company in a capitalist society. We have a capitalist economy here. It's great. You don't like something? Don't pay for it. Not any more complicated than that. You don't like it? Don't watch. Don't buy paper. Don't watch anything associated with him. Don't buy pay-per-views associated with him. And the UFC won't will probably not keep him around if he is not worth the hassle. And it's not that it, it, this is really not that complicated, guys. <laughs> and again, I understand if this bothers you. I really do. But if it bothers you, let's not make a big deal out of it. Seriously, just don't watch. If if it's that big a deal to you, if you would like to affect this, petitions won't do it because Dana White doesn't care. I mean, you you would it would take a huge amount of negative publicity that we are that you know not you not me not. I don't think he, like the collect. It would take nearly a hundred percent of 
not just MMA fandom, but a lot of the mainstream media and casual fandom really outright rebelling against this to really have an impact like that. A, a much better way is to vote with your dollars and your time. Anyway, that's my take on that. Uh, I think... Let me see. I think that's it. Jeez. Short show. All right. That's good for you. You don't want to listen to me talk to myself for an hour and a half. 45 minutes is more than enough. Uh, all right. As for myself, I misspoke last week when I said there were... Uh, Mark and I had a preview of The Incredibles 2 on Tuesday. It's actually this coming Tuesday. So the... Uh, what? 19th? Yeah, the 19th. Mark and I will be will be reviewing The Incredibles Part 2. I'll give you a free preview. It's basically on par with the first one. I have a few a few minor nitpicks. As my dog freaks out in the background. But we'll go over all of it. I mean, it's a it's Pixar, man. They've only had one outright critical failure. That's Cars 2. I mean, even Cars 1 and 3 have some artistic merit buried in there. And even, I mean, like, if if we set aside the Cars franchise, the worst Pixar movie is probably The Good Dinosaur. And if that's the worst movie in your studio, you're, you're doing great. Like, you're doing so great. So Mark and I will review that. Uh, the week after that, we'll be reviewing Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. As we continue, Hollywood continues to attach directors that I like to projects I don't care about. I had no interest in Star Wars The Last Jedi, and then they had Ryan Johnson directing it, and I actually like Ryan Johnson's work. Now we have J.A. Bayona, who made one of my... God, how do I say one of my... It's one of my favorite movies, if you're in the right mood to watch an imaginative study on the grieving process with uh, A Monster Calls. Uh, beautifully rendered, beautifully acted, uh, lovely movie. I loved it. And now he's directing this, and I just, eh, I have such little interest in this movie. <laughs> so, we'll see how that plays out. But again, this Tuesday on Damn You Hollywood, Mark and I will review The Incredibles Part Two, and eh, Part Two, the sequel. And we'll so we'll be going over that. Then next Sunday we'll be back here to review Fight Night 132. And let me see how that lines up. 23rd. That's all we'll be doing. Jeez, you get a cu- you guys get a couple of weeks that are just short. Uh, however, the week after that, so uh, the first, the first of July, we're uh, we're running because that's our double. That's our double preview that we're going into International Fight Week with that. So we'll have the finale of the Ultimate Fighter, the last Ultimate Fighter if the ESPN deal is to be believed. And I am so happy. More than me, Larry Zonka, man. That guy. My hat's off to him. He reviews, you know, 18 hours of professional wrestling a day. Uh, and still finds time to cover that boring monstrosity. Um... God bless that man. But we'll be previewing the finale of that. Um, and not a man. That is not a terribly compelling card. But we will also be previewing UFC 226, which uh, is. <laughs> I mean, your main event is for the heavyweight title. It is Stipe Miocic and Daniel, the light heavyweight champion Daniel Cormier. So Cormier could become the Second guy to hold belts at the same time in different weight classes. You've got the fight I'm actually looking forward to the most on that card, Max Holloway and Brian Ortega. Oh, so good. Uh, You have Francis Ngannou and Derek Lewis, people who like heavyweights. Uh, This is where they rebooked Michael Chiesa and Anthony Pettis, which isn't a bad fight. Uh, We also have, this should not be on the main card, but we have Gokan Saki and Khalil Roundtree because they're somebody's going to sleep. Like the way those two fight, somebody's sleeping. Um, Uriah Hall fights Paulo Costa. Hopefully, Costa can remove Uriah Hall from consciousness and MMA fandom. I, I don't like Uriah Hall. 
Yancey Medeiros and Mike Perry. Rafael Assuncao is fighting Rob Font, and no one cares because while Rafael Assuncao is a very good fighter, no one cares. Um, geez, Dan Hooker and Gilbert Burns on Fight Pass, man. That's a good fight. That's a really good card. So we'll be previewing all of that in a couple of weeks. Until then, that's it for me. Again, next week we'll just review UFC Fight Night 132. Should be another relatively condensed program. Tune in to Damn You Hollywood. Mark and I will review The Incredibles. I'm sure Jeff has both movie reviews up. I know he mentioned the uh, his he has a spoiler-free review of Luke Cage Season 2 up in the movies and television zone, as well as reviews of The Incredibles 2, and I believe he has Fallen Kingdom up as well. Uh, he's also doing a lot of E3 coverage, so for those of us who are video game nerds, yes, I am, uh, he's got a lot of coverage from that stuff coming out over there, so... Feel free to continue you know, reading his work. It's quality stuff. Even if I don't agree with every with all of his points, I like reading his perspective. Hopefully that's true of me as well. I don't expect everyone to agree with me, but hopefully my perspective is at least somewhat interesting and informative, Even again, even if you disagree. I don't need or want the world to agree with me. That would be a terrible, terrible thing. But on that note, thank you all very much for listening. Uh, apologies for it just being me, but hopefully I'll have Jeff back with me next week. If not, it'll just be me again, and it'll be another short show. But eh, Again, that's not the worst thing in the world either, all things considered. Uh, I'm Robert. Thank you again for listening. Thank you for pointing me at your friends, if you happen to have any, that are into the sport. Sorry, that came across way weird. If you happen to have any friends who are into the sport, not if you happen to have any friends. I assume you're at least partially sociable creatures. Human beings are, on average. Uh, point them in our direction. You can follow the Radulich and Broadcasting Network on Facebook. Just like the page, R-A-D-U-L-I-C-H. Uh, you can follow us on Spreaker, iTunes. Uh, you can follow Mark Radulich's YouTube channel where these things go up as well. There's, We try to get it out there for you guys. We try to make sure that uh, they, you know, they go up places for you to find them. So, uh, Please continue listening. Uh, you know, your support means the world to me, even though I I haven't actually earned it <laughs> in some kind of objective sense, but I keep trying to earn it, so hopefully that continues to count for something substantial. I'll see you all next week. Until then, please continue to be well, be safe, and behave.